Cloud computing isn't new, but it has changed dramatically over the last two decades. Whether you're a developer, a designer, or just interested in how modern applications and IT actually work, in this video, we will be giving an introduction to modern day cloud computing, what it is, how it works, and why it powers almost everything around you. Hi, if you're new around here, my name is Ryan. I'm an AWS certified solutions architect and developer, and my goal is to teach you modern serverless system design using AWS. Let's jump in. Today, we're diving into the basics of cloud computing, what it is, why it matters, and why it's become such a crucial part of modern technology. Whether you're completely new to the cloud or just want a refresher, this presentation will give you a general overview from a modern perspective. We will cover what cloud computing is, a brief history, as well as some general concepts and terminology. So what is cloud computing? Well, cloud computing is like renting computing power and storage over the internet instead of owning it. You get access to servers, databases, and services from anywhere without having to worry about the physical infrastructure. It works like a utility, like how we use electricity. You don't need to own the power plant, you just pay for what you use. This flexibility is what makes the cloud so powerful and so widely adopted like it is today. So let's take a look at how the cloud got its start. In the early 2000s, businesses were stuck managing their own servers. This was expensive and it was really slow to scale. Then along comes virtualization. And virtualization made it possible to run multiple systems on a single machine, which was a much more efficient use of hardware. And in 2006, AWS changed the game by introducing their Elastic Compute Cloud or EC2 service, which effectively let developers rent computing power like a utility, and it's grown so much since then. Today, the cloud powers everything from AI and machine learning to global video streaming and e-commerce. So let's talk about some of cloud computing's core characteristics. These are the five traits that make cloud computing well, cloud computing. They're the reason why you can access apps instantly, scale them to millions of users, and only pay for what you use. So let's go through them. On-demand self-service means you can spin up servers, databases, and storage instantly. Broad network access means that services are available from anywhere on any device that has an internet connection. It's what powers remote work, mobile applications, and global collaboration. With resource pooling and multi-tenancy, behind the scenes, cloud providers are able to use shared physical infrastructure to serve lots of customers. With scalability and rapid elasticity, if traffic spikes, the system scales with it and shrinks when demand drops. This happens automatically in modern applications. And finally, it's a measured service, which means you only pay for what you use, just like water and electricity. These characteristics are what allow modern apps like streaming platforms, food delivery services, and chatbots to launch quickly and serve people all over the world. Now let's talk about how cloud services are delivered, because not all cloud services look the same. We usually talk about the cloud in three layers. First is infrastructure as a service. This is like renting virtual servers or networks. You control most things, so it's flexible, but it's very hands-on. Second is platform as a service. You focus on your application and the code, and the platform takes care of the operating system, the scaling, and the deployment. It's great for developers. Software as a service is the fully managed experience. Think Gmail, Dropbox, or Notion. You just log in and you use the service. Each level of service shifts more responsibility to the cloud provider and less responsibility to you. These models help developers and companies determine how much control versus simplicity that they want. Today, a lot of applications use a mix of these models. Now let's talk about cloud deployment models. There are three main ways that the cloud can be deployed. The first is public cloud, which is the most common. This is what AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Platform all offer. Resources are shared among customers, but are isolated securely. Now private cloud is when cloud services are deployed to an on-premises data center for the dedicated use of a single organization. You'll usually find private cloud in sectors that have really sensitive workloads like finance or the government. Now, hybrid cloud is just a mix of public and private. Maybe your critical data stays in a private cloud, but your public website is hosted on AWS. Hybrid is very common for large enterprises that are transitioning to the cloud. And I'll mention a couple others here too. Multi-cloud strategies are where organizations use services from AWS or Google Cloud Platform or Azure together. This is either to avoid vendor lock-in for compliance reasons or because they want to use a pick and choose method of service usage. The flexibility of hybrid and multi-cloud allow organizations to optimize for cost, resilience, and compliance. 
And there's also a growing trend in sovereign cloud, which is mainly for compliance with national data regulations. So what are some of the benefits of using the cloud? Well, it dramatically cuts costs. No more buying servers, cooling them, or hiring teams to maintain them. You can scale resources instantly depending on demand, like retail companies during the holidays. The cloud offers global infrastructure, disaster recovery, and improved uptime. While cost savings matter, the cloud's real value is in agility and innovation. You can prototype ideas, test new markets, and deploy globally in hours. Cloud-native architectures enable faster delivery, better fault tolerance, and continuous improvement. So what does this all look like in the real world? Let's look at some examples you might recognize. Netflix runs entirely in the cloud using AWS, streaming to millions of people globally with near zero downtime. Unless you're watching live streamed meme boxing matches. OpenAI uses Azure supercomputers to power ChatGPT and other large language models. Epic Games uses AWS to run Fortnite for a global player base. Zoom scaled its infrastructure virtually overnight during the pandemic using AWS and Oracle Cloud. But it's not just big tech. Cloud computing empowers startups to launch products faster without needing to buy hardware. It allows enterprises to modernize legacy systems and stay competitive in fast-moving markets. Cloud-native platforms are essential for innovation, AI, automation, and scale. Cloud computing powers many of the services that you use today. So who are some of the largest cloud providers? Well, the three biggest are AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Platform, and you've probably already heard of most of these. AWS was first and is still the biggest, offering the broadest selection of services to choose from. Microsoft Azure is popular among enterprises, especially those that are using Windows or Microsoft tools like Office 365 or Active Directory. Google Cloud is known for its strong data analytics and machine learning tools. AWS remains the leader, but Azure and Google Cloud Platform have gained ground, especially in AI, security, and enterprise adoption. There are others too, like IBM, Oracle, and Alibaba, but these three dominate the market. So let's grab our crystal balls and try to take a look at what the future of cloud computing looks like. Of course, generative AI is now driving a major demand for cloud-based machine learning platforms and model APIs. Providers like AWS Bedrock, Azure OpenAI, and Google Vertex AI make it accessible to all. Next, sustainability. Companies are increasingly choosing cloud providers based on sustainability. Think carbon tracking dashboards, green regions, and energy efficient infrastructure. With edge computing and global distribution, real-time apps in gaming, retail, and industrial IoT require compute at the edge. Cloud is expanding into local regions, 5G zones, and even satellite link zones. And API-first infrastructure with tools like Terraform, the CDK, and Kubernetes. This means teams can automate, version, and collaborate on cloud infrastructure just like they do with software. All right, so let's wrap it up and give a little recap. Cloud computing gives us instant, flexible access to IT resources without the overhead of owning hardware. It's scalable, cost-effective, and a game changer for businesses of all sizes. Whether you're building apps, analyzing data, or managing teams, understanding the cloud is essential because cloud computing is the basis of our modern digital infrastructure. And the pace of change is constant. The key to keeping up is to stay curious, stay adaptable, and keep learning. I'd love to hear your questions and thoughts, so let me know down in the comments below, and please don't forget to like the video. Thank you for watching.